Well, if I can get everybody's attention, we'll get this going tonight. It's uh, it's really exciting to be up here. Um, it's been a whirlwind three years. This is the third year the Giovanni Vetrano Foundation uh, is awarding three scholarship winners. Um, it, time has just flown, um, but it's been exciting. Uh, you know, for those who don't know, uh, Giovanni Vetrano was my son. He passed away in a tragic accident two and a half years ago. And I'll tell you what, the community of Tallahassee was absolutely amazing in their support. And because of that, the foundation started. Really, it was because of the people of Tallahassee and what they were able to do to shower us with love and just uh, what they were able to give to us. Thought about the foundation. So... It's kind of bittersweet to be up here. It really is, because as you get ready for this event, as I do every year, you get run with emotions. You start thinking about those soccer years that Giovanni used to have and that I used to have with him, and really about the journey. Because, you know, the first couple of years, I talked about Giovanni a little bit when I stood up here. And as we approached the third year, candidates, I start looking at their journeys because they're in essay form. They're on their applications. Their references talk all about it, about that journey. It's funny. I remember when Giovanni's journey started. It started about a decade ago. We were at a middle school soccer game. He was a keeper for Raw Middle School. They had won that night. They were moving on to the middle school championship. Giovanni had just started playing keeper. He was just into soccer. And we were about to leave that night. The team was celebrating. It was a good time. And a coach came up to me, a coach that most of you probably know, just a wonderful individual and family here in Tallahassee. Dwayne Dawn came up to me. And he had never met me before. I had never met him. And he said, hey, Mr. Vitrano, can I talk to you for a second? I said, sure, sure. He goes, you know, Dwayne Daunt, we made our introductions. And he said, I've got a problem. I coach for ASG. And my keeper is out for the year. And I need somebody to fill in. And I saw Giovanni playing tonight. And I think he'd be the perfect keeper to fill in for the rest of the year. And then he kind of said, but you know what? There's going to be a little travel involved. There's, there's going to probably be a little more practice involved. Um, but there you have a 13-year-old. Giovanni's excited. Why is he excited? Because there's a coach that wants him to play for his team. That's, that's the biggest thing you could have as a, as a young athlete when somebody says, I want you. So, of course, in the moment, I was like, that sounds phenomenal. Let's get together. Let's talk about it. Well, long story short, that little stint to fill in at keeper lasted six years for ASG. I'd say roughly. Uh, <laughs> but it was the journey that started on that night that I'll always remember. You've all done the journey. That's the beautiful part about this scholarship. I mean, what is the journey? The journey is racing to the fields at top speed. But wait a second. We haven't had dinner yet. We got to stop and get something to eat. Well, maybe you don't want to eat before practice. We're going to eat after practice. There's a whole thing that you go through three nights out of the week. And then you push homework aside, right? Part of the journey is getting home at 10 o'clock at night, showering up. And then having to do your homework, get ready. Which one am I going to be at? Well, then the parents have to make sure they get them to go to both. And, you know, the journey is absolutely phenomenal. It's hotel rooms. It's meeting other parents, other soccer players, all the coaches that you're a part of. 
It's the journey that makes it all worth it. It's the journey for each and every one of you that have led you here tonight. And you're going to look back with it all with fond memories years from now. You know, my soccer family, when Giovanni passed away, I can't tell you how many people from my soccer journey and Giovanni's soccer journey showed up at my front door to just say, hey, love you. Give me a hug. We're here for you. You're going to have that. Even though you're now moving on to the next step, just take a, a few moments with your parents tonight and look back at that journey that got you here tonight and how much fun it was. Sure, there were a lot of tough times, a lot of times you had to put in that extra effort, but think about the journey. It is so much fun. Well, when I go over the applications, I'll say it again, that's what I get excited about. I start reading about all of you. And it's so much fun because I'm reliving somebody else's journey now. And I'm saying, wow, that was so great. Look what she did in school. Look what she did out of school. And you kind of get a look at how great. And I'm going to tell you, we had over 30 applicants, a great talent pool. And it was tough. It was so tough. We all fell in love with so many different students. To have you three here really excites me. It does. It, it warms my heart. It really does. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over our three winners for everybody tonight. And then I will announce what the awards are for each winner. But I want to start. I'm going to start with, oh, this is tough. Laurie Bradley Meg. I'm, I'm, that's the only time I'm using her first name. Mike, with a reference that this is how you pronounce it. This is, well, I'm just going to say, that's right. I'm just going to say LB for the purpose of this. LB went to McClay High School. Coached by Zach Arsenault, who's here. Jose Cruz Torres, who's right next to him. Uh, helped shape her into the young soccer lady that she is today. I use, I use notes because I can't remember all these good things in my mind. I'm not that smart. A 4.52 GPA, a member of the National Art Honor Society, the National Honors Society, the Key Club, the Anchor Club, a member of the McClay Student Council, both the English and History Student of the Year at McClay. LB is on the Tallahassee Community College Dean's List. She's a key member of the National Rural and Small Town Recognition Program. That's a lot. It's a lot to do just in the classroom and in your community. She plays other sports too, not just soccer. Tennis, lacrosse, part of the cheer team. Keeps it going all year long. But this is a soccer scholarship, so when we make references and make those calls, spoke to Coach Torres, who... Could not have said enough great things about you. He was always excited about talking about you on the pitch. And I want to tell you something that he said about you. Coach Torres said, no true stats can measure her play. Hard work, slide tackles, goal involvement, leadership, and passion are her makeup. Now, let me add to that. No offense, Coach Torres, but stats were there, too. Stats were there. She led the team in goals with 13, led the team in points with 32, led in steals with 93. Pretty amazing. Coach Torres went on to say this. She is unquestionably one of the best starting 11 in Leon County. Very powerful statement. But it was what you said. Now, for those that don't know, everybody who submits an application also submits um, an essay where they have to talk about themselves. It's hard to believe that this could be LB based off of what we just heard about her. But this is what she said. My travel soccer career started in the eighth grade, and it was a very bumpy start. While everyone on my team had been playing since the second grade, I didn't start competitive soccer until the sixth. Needless to say, I was one of the worst on my team and rarely played. I specifically remember finally having a travel game close by 
and asking my grandmother to come watch me play. I knew I wouldn't get much playing time, but I thought she could see me do what I love for a few minutes. Towards the end of the second half, my coach finally called me up to go into the game. I waited for the play to stop. After, after, after about 30 seconds, my coach told me to go sit back down. After sitting down, all I could think about was how I never wanted that to happen again. It was around this time I had to decide if I wanted to give up or if I wanted to fight to become great at the sport I love. I think it's pretty obvious what choice she made. LB made that choice to fight, to be here tonight. She later added at the end of her wonderful essay, it was, it was great. In life, there are always going to be setbacks and things that don't go my way. It is up to me to decide what I do when these things happen. I saw what happened through soccer when I fought for what I loved. I used the same determination to get into Auburn. This is the determination I will carry with me to Auburn and beyond. I know that with this, I will be able to accomplish my dreams. That's some pretty powerful stuff from Laurie Bradley May. So let's give it up for her. Another one of our finalists, Martina Silva. Wow, from Florida High. Coached by Victoria Sachs, who's here tonight. We had spoken so many times, finally met for the first time. Um, but sometimes when we get applications, you don't get the true story of somebody. And I think Martina was one of those that once we started making calls and we started talking to people, we're like, holy cow, like this, this is pretty incredible. Um, Martina really is a special athlete here in Tallahassee. She has a 4.65 weighted GPA, a 3.9 unweighted GPA, and dad made sure he told us it was unweighted when we put it on the website. Oh, was that? But as you can tell, both are absolutely phenomenal, but thank you for that. Uh, Martina is a secretary in the National Honor Society, a member of the National English Honor Society, uh, a historian in the, in the Spanish National Honor Society, and a vice president in the Future Business Leaders of America, uh, a member of HOSA, which is HOSA, which is the Future Health Professionals, or formerly known as the Health Occupation Students of America. That's some pretty strong academic stuff and things in the community. But to quote Martina, she said this, the academic achievement I'm proudest of winning is winning the Student Athlete Award every year for my GPA because it shows that even with time and energy taken away by soccer, I'm still able to stay on top of my academic work and be successful. On the soccer field, as I said, coached by uh, Victoria Sachs, who said this, and I know coaches love their players, but another powerful statement. Victoria said that Martina is one of the best keepers in Tallahassee. Well, she is. She only gave up 19 goals this year, had 59 saves, four shutouts, and showed up every night on the pitch. Coach Sachs went on to talk about something, and she got a little more excited when she talked about this, about Martina's grittiness. I love that word. Anytime you're talking sports and a coach says gritty, it's pretty powerful. District championship against McClay. The Marauders score a goal with 15 minutes left to tie the game. Even though it wasn't her fault, says coach, Martina took the blame rallied her team together, and accepted blame for the goal. She then turned to the team and said, shake it off, I'm not giving up any more goals in this game. From that moment forward, she got cleated, 
was bleeding badly, but never gave up another goal in the game. And she even stopped a breakaway down the stretch to lead her team to victory. Then they took her to the hospital to get stitches <laughs> after the win. That's what we call grittiness. Now, on a more personal side, Martina and her dad moved from Chile how many years ago? A decade ago? 12 years ago. They have a better life. To start things up here in the United States. It's not without turmoil. When COVID hit, they had to go back home. How long were you gone for? A year. Can you imagine coming to the United States, starting a new life, then having to pick up, go back to another country, and then eventually come back? That's what they did. And didn't miss a beat in the process. Well, Martina didn't miss a beat, at least. She absolutely killed it in the classroom at Florida High. We mentioned her accomplishments. She speaks three different languages. I have enough problems with just the one. What languages do you speak? In French. There you go. She works with elders at uh, Westminster Oak here in Tallahassee, volunteers at the Tom Brown Animal Shelter. And her teacher reference, Shannon Axtell, told us that you put on a very cool Spanish fashion show. <laughs> That's pretty cool. She does it all. What's the next step? Well, I was trying to get it out of her early. After all that, it looks like either UF or Florida State, correct? So all those accomplishments, taking her and hopefully keeping her in this, here in the state of Florida. So everybody give it up for Martina Sierra. All right, our final winner, Megan Roper from Leon High School. There's always a soft spot for Leon, by the way. Everybody. That's where Giovanni went. Uh, coached by Dan Westner and Ashley Fink. Um, she had a weighted GPA of 3.6. A member of the Rho Kappa Honor Society. Did I say that right? Okay. Part of the Leon High School Honor Roll. And I say that because she had a C average after her first two years of high school and was diagnosed with ADHD. And that's a battle for those that know people with it. It's certainly a battle to overcome, and she did. She approached that battle head on and hasn't had anything less than an A since in high school. And as you know, if you get off to a slow start in high school, it's very tough to catch up. But she was able to do that. And kudos to you. That's a, quite the academic achievement. Her teacher, Kate Davis, said this about Megan. She has a strong sense of self that you don't often see in high school students. She isn't overly worried about reading the room. She always does what's right and with a sense of confidence. Love that swagger. Nothing has shown more confidence than Megan's work in the Leon Dance Marathon, whose sole purpose for that dance marathon is fundraising for the Children's Miracle Network. As the Dance Relations Chair, Megan helped raise nearly $180,000, a staggering dollar amount. That's a 33% increase from the previous year, and it made Leon High School the highest fundraising high school in the state of Florida. That is absolutely amazing. But then there's soccer. We take it to the pitch. And I'll tell you what, it was a very tough start to the season for the Leon girls soccer team. They had to make a coaching change right before the start of the season. And it was a change that was spearheaded by the team and the girls. And Megan led that charge. She had to be the one to step up and be the voice. Kudos. I always give a good little pug. Coach Wessner in the back. He came out of retirement less than a week before the season started and coached that team the entire season. Talk about commitment to a school. 
Pretty awesome job. But Meg had to be the Meg had to be the voice for the rest of the team in that situation. Coach Wessner would tell you he'd be first to say the team didn't set the, you know, Leon County soccer on fire this year. It, they struggled this year, but the struggle really was at the beginning of the year. It, it wasn't throughout the year. Once you got past that pain and the turmoil, the soccer was the fun part. And just having a season and putting that team out there, kudos to both you and Coach Wessner. It's pretty impressive. In fact, uh, one of your personal references, uh, Jamie Yarbrough said, I have known Megan since she was three years old. She is always on it, always the leader, and she always takes it to the next level. Kate Davis, her teacher, said this, Meg was the captain of her team and the chair of the dance marathon. She does it for the right reasons not for her application. She could be involved in more things for her resume, but goes all out in the things she cares about. Going all out has worked. Certainly one of Tallahassee's top soccer players, and Meg has also been accepted into Auburn University. So let's give it up for Megan Roper. Wow. With all the great applicants, I can I think the, our board and um, you know Chris Petley, if you can raise your hand, Director of Communications here in Leon County Schools, uh, President of the Tallahassee Soccer Club, um, he's part of our board. Tom Block as well. Uh, most of you know his voice from Florida State Athletics. Uh, he's also a member of our board. Uh, my daughter Emily Copeland, who's got her hands full with the kids. Uh, is there and I'll, Mike Famey, my best friend and partner in crime, uh, also on the board. When we sit down and we go over all these applications, I think they can tell you it takes hours upon hours to pick our winners. And the reason why it takes that long is because everyone is so awesome. And I want to let you know, you three ladies, know that you you stood above the rest. You really did, and it, and it wasn't easy. Um, but it's time to give away those scholarships, right? Um, I want to award our first scholarship from the Giovanni Vetrano Foundation in the amount of $2,000 to Megan Roper. Come on up. Give me that trophy to hold, turn around, and take pictures. I'm gonna let you stand there for a few minutes. You gotta pose. <laughs> awesome job. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Megan Roper, let's give it up for. Which leaves us with two. Um, Another one of our two thousand dollar winners, um, just absolutely incredible, and it's it's <laughs> it was so tough in making the decision is is who should win this. But our second two thousand dollar winner for the Giovanni Vetrano Foundation scholarship goes to Laurie Bradley. Man. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Let's give it up for LB. Wow, which brings us to our winner then, the winner of this year's $6,000 scholarship for the Giovanni Vetrano Foundation scholarship is Martina Silva. Give it up for us. Come on up here. Congratulations. Oh, turn around. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't make me cry. She's going to make me cry. I don't want to cry up here. 
I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, I touched on earlier. I want to thank the parents. Um, I've been there. I've sat there. I've gone to all the soccer matches and done the road trips. And um, it's because of you that Auburn University, Auburn University, Florida, it just, and the grades, the community involvement, and everything they do is absolutely phenomenal. And it's because of the way they were raised. Um, so kudos to you. Let's give it up for the parents. Of course. Family and coaching. Um, I always have to give it up for Andy Warner, um, who probably the wrong term to use. I call him like the godfather of soccer in Tallahassee. Um, I don't think people understand with ASG just what Andy brings to Tallahassee. Uh, I talked about the journey. His program is second to none, and it's the journeys that you've created for thousands of families over the year that have also uh, brought us to this point today. So I wanted to thank you as well. And to the coaches, and certainly um, it, it's just remarkable job that you've done. But I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. Um, it's truly an honor to stand up here and be able to present to all of you. Um, don't slide out the door quick. We're going to make you go home with your tabletop banners and your pictures. But uh, Ryan uh, with WCTV is here, and I'm sure he's going to want to talk. Um, so, and I know Mike from the foundation is going to want to do some interviews with everybody uh, so we can post them uh, on our website. You could probably go to our website. I know you've all been there, gvscholarship.org, and in a couple of days, check out all the stuff in the news. Well, you're going to tune into the news to watch it from Ryan, but um, some of the other stuff that we get from the foundation. From the bottom of my heart, thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. It was truly a pleasure. Thank <laughs> you.